Time to get spooky. Because on Thursday, it's time for Halloween. I know, and this expert, well, to tell us about it, is a um, what well, paranormal investigator, Steve Ball, who joins me in the studio now. Hello, Steve. Good afternoon. No, I can confirm you are alive and well yes. here in the studio. That's I, nice. I checked my pulse as we came in, and alive, not too sure about well, but definitely alive. Well, as long as you're alive, yes. that's the main thing. Yeah. I'm not sure, I don't want... A guest from the other side. I will try not to fade on you as we go. Oh, please don't. Thank you. We have got a studio ghost. I've heard. Yes, Anthony the ghost. I heard, yeah. Mm. Does that excite you? Um, It would do if I could see him. Oh. Now, I don't think anybody has actually seen him. Uh, I, I think, apparently, we had a psychic fella in here, and he said he could feel him, and uh, he was in the studio, and he used to have a furniture shop. Right. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure I'd actually want to be a ghost, to be perfectly honest, with all these psychics coming around and fe- feeling me. I, mean, I can't see that being very, uh, very nice. But if you're lonely on the other side, it might be nice having somebody pop round for a nice little spiritual snuggle. Yeah, I think of all the fun that you could have, though. Mm. Winding people the, up. That's right. That's throwing right. potatoes. Definitely. That's what you'd do. Definitely. Throw potatoes. And other things. Perhaps oranges. If I was in the mood. Yes. If I was in the mood. Eggs? That, no, that'd be a bit nasty, wouldn't it? If they were off. That oh, would be that, real fun. That would be horrible. What kind of ghost would you be? <laughs> don't come back and haunt me. I don't, I don't want you anywhere near my haunted house, thanks. I only want, like, Casper and nice things like that. No, you're from... Uh, Coventry Paranormal Investigations, or CPI. It sounds like a TV show on Channel 5. What do you do? We are a Coventry-based uh, paranormal investigation group. Um, we differ from a lot of paranormal investigation groups because we are a group of sceptics. And we are a very scientific group. Uh, we tend not to use mediums, um, and we tend to go by... Um, we use more um, technology, mm-hmm. should we say, to try and find... We've always found that 98% of hauntings can be explained perfectly rationally. Uh, It's just that people tend not to look in the right areas. And it's the 2% that can't be explained that we we really like to get our teeth into. Right. When you say you do it scientifically, I mean, what do you do? Do do Ronco make a spookalita or something? We will actually... We've got loads and loads of equipment. Mm. We have um, infrared cameras, DVRs, uh, motion sensors, sound recorders, EMF recorders... Um, we've got everything and if we go to a property we will completely rig the property out and try and capture any proof that we can be it from a disembodied voice uh, recorded on a tape or an audio device to actual movement on a camera Right, and and have you ever found anything? We've we've caught a few anomalous things, Ooh. anomalous phenomena. Oh, nice! Which is easy for me to say. That's a nice turn of I phrase. Like that, yeah. Enjoyed I've been that. Dying to use that in conversation. I'm using it for the rest of this week. <laughs> anomalous phenomena. Yes, exactly. please. Yeah. So yeah, we've we've caught a few things. We've we've caught a few things. We've seen a few interesting, a few interesting things. It, it, it's 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 that sort of a situation though, where things always seem to happen. Just as we've put all the equipment away, ah, well, wouldn't they just? It's almost those like pesky they spooks. know. Yes, it is. Nine times out of ten, that's what happens. We'll have a whole evening with absolutely nothing going on whatsoever, and the moment the last package case is closed and the clasps are done up, it's in the back of the car. We go to say goodbye, and something will shoot off a shelf, or we'll hear a door bang, or in my case, at a pub in uh, Derby, I actually saw a, a figure. Walking up the door, walking up the bar. You didn't. I did. What and what was it? It was a pub that we were doing, and apparently this pub had got all sorts that had been going on with it, and we were all very sceptical. We thought it was just for uh, promotional purposes and that sort of thing. And we went in there. We didn't manage to catch anything. I mean, we had a great night, <laughs> but we'd packed everything up, and I was in the bar with our founder Martin Higginson, and we were saying goodbye to the uh, landlord, and the landlord and Martin were stood where you are. And I was facing them and saw a figure of a lady walking up the bar behind them. And she just disappeared about ten feet before she reached them. I must have given you the willies. I actually got really excited. Did you? I actually got really, really excited. Goodness. Yeah. Oh, no. I'd, I'd have been out of there like the devil was behind me. So you're not frightened or anything? No, no. A good paranormal investigator, despite what you see on certain TV programmes, when you hear a noise or when you see something... 
you tend to try and run towards it rather than away from it because you can't see anything when you've got your back to it. That much is true. That's correct. So whenever we do hear anything or whether we see anything or anything, we try and get to the source as soon as we can. Uh, for instance, we were doing an investigation at St Mary's Guildhall and we were in one of the cellars and both, again, Martin uh, and myself saw a black, what can only be described as like a black ball, uh, floating about six, seven feet off the floor and it went from one side of the cellar yeah. straight across to the other side. And at first we both thought it was a bat or a bird that got into the cellar and we flew from one end of the cellar to the other to see what it was and there was nothing there whatsoever and we still don't know what that was to this day but we both saw it. I, I, it, it, I suppose it would be nice to have backup. I see all sorts of things but I know it's my vivid imagination. Well what we do when we're on an investigation we try to make sure that we're never ever on our own because if you're on your own as you say and you see something it could quite happily be your imagination. If two of you see something then it's less likely to be your imagination mm. so we always try to do an investigation or to go everywhere in pairs bless you well look i i, I have no doubt there are things out there that uh, we know nothing about so i'm happy to keep an open mind now coventry in warwickshire it is unusually haunted around our parts. i think i heard somewhere that it's the eighth haunted pl haunted city in the uk the eighth i think it was about the eighth I reckon it's more I than I thought that. it was higher than that. Yeah. I actually thought it was about the... I, I heard it was about the eight. I think we need to perhaps put some of our ghosts on the official list. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. I'm guessing on the official list there's no Anthony the Studio ghost. I, I've, I've never come across Anthony. No, well, that ratchet it up. That's got to get us a few points that, on the list, hasn't it? That probably us up to fifth, I would have thought. Yeah, at yeah, least. At least. At least fifth. It's a showbiz ghost. And also, the, the psychic fella that was in as well, he thought it might be... Um, Carry On star Kenneth Connor. Oh, right. Either him or Anthony the Furniture Seller. I would probably go for Anthony the Furniture Seller. Would you? I'd yeah. rather have a Carry On star. If, if, there you go. If I could choose it's all one, down to yeah. Personal preference. If, if I could choose one, I'd go for Sid James or Bernard Breslau. But I'll take <laughs> Kenneth Connor. Oh, that, that's fine. That's fine. So listen, then uh, we're on the we're eighth in the list. That's quite disappointing. I thought we'd be higher than that. But eighth is good. There are lots of cities in the UK, so eighth means we're, we're up there. They're all thereabouts. Who have we got round here? Oh, we've got lots and lots round here. I mean, we are very lucky. Like I say, when when I heard that we were eighth, I was actually quite surprised because I thought we'd be a lot higher mm. in the table than that um i mean the 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 land around this area has been settled on for thousands and thousands of years first capital city of england thank you very that's much that's right yeah. so obviously there is a massive amount of history that's underneath our feet mm. um and we've got all sorts you know we've got um st mary's guild hall as i say we've got warwick castle we've got all of those sorts of different places that all have reputed hauntings okay so who's at st mary's guild hall let's well, start st there. mary's guild hall there's quite a few um spirits at st mary's there's more than one there is more than oh, one at, at st mary's you've got a grey lady of course, uh, they're always grey lady, always, always a grey lady. lady. There's always a grey yeah. or a white lady, um, and she's seen floating through some walls. Mm -hmm. And they've also had lots of flashing lights and a little girl in a blue dress. Little girl in a blue in dress? A blue dress has uh, been reported. OK, so I'm writing this down. Flashing lights, girl with a blue dress. That might be worth... So what we're going to do, we're going to investigate some of these further during the course of the week, if they pique my interest. Girl in a blue dress, I'm liking... The... Grey ladies... Seen one, you've seen them all. Well, that's it. Exactly. The chances are it's probably Anne Boleyn, because I think most other grey ladies are Anne Boleyn. Are they really? Well, well, most of them that I've ever come across. There's something to do with Henry VIII. They're probably one of his wives. Yeah, has popped up somewhere or yeah, other. Yeah, because he had so many, you see. So. Yeah, he's pretty much a banker, really, isn't he? If you're going to make he up a, a ghost. He was a busy lad. He was, and he obviously was. a busy ghost. OK, so that's St Mary's Guildhall. I like the sound of those. What else have we got? Well, obviously, I mean, one of my favourite places, and it's a place that we're actually going back to do a repeat investigation on, Ooh, yeah. um, on the 16th of next month is Guy's Cliff. Ah, in Warwick, in yes. In Warwick, right next door to the Saxon Mill. And that is an amazing place. I mean, it goes right back to um, Guy of Warwick, who was the son of a steward uh, to the Earls of Warwick. And um, there's all sorts goes on there. Uh, he went away. He fell for a, a lady called Felice, uh, Felice when he came back. And um, he decided that he was going to lock himself away in a hermitage to sort of uh, amend for the sins 
that he'd done while he'd been away, as in all the, the atrocities that he'd been part of. And she actually committed suicide and threw herself off the cliff. Oh, no. Um, and uh, apparently people have actually seen that. People have been walking by Saxon Mill on the other side of the river. And I actually spoke to one guy who'd actually witnessed it himself. And he'd actually saw uh, a lady standing on the cliff at Guy's Cliff and throw herself off. Goodness me. That's terrifying. OK, so we'll, well, I'll, I'll add that to my list because I am quite piqued by that. Uh, the lady falling off the cliff. Where else could we go then? Well, the other one mm. is, it's a little bit of a trek, but right opposite Guy's Cliff, on the other side of the bypass, is a place called Blacklow Hill. Yes. And there's a wood right on the top. People have probably driven past it hundreds and hundreds of times. As you're going into uh, Stratford, it's on the right-hand side at the junction. Big no, hill. Oh, I know where it is. Right -hand yeah, side. yeah, yeah. And if you go to the top of there, there is actually a monument. Mm. And the monument reads something along the lines of here uh, by barons as lawless as himself was headed Piers Gaveston um, for crimes against the Earl of Warwick. And apparently he, he wronged the Earl of Warwick uh, this is going back, obviously, you know, four or five hundred years ago. And he was captured at Deddington in Oxfordshire, brought up and tried at Warwick Castle. And then he was taken from Warwick Castle just outside the Earl of Warwick's jurisdiction to Blacklow Hill, where he was run through and beheaded by two Welsh swordsmen. Goodness, they were from Wales? They were from Wales. Lord. And he was left there and a couple of shoemakers from Warwick apparently took his body and took it back to the Earl of Warwick, who refused to have anything to do with it. So it was actually, they had to petition the Pope to get him, because he was excommunicated, and then he was taken back and buried in a, a proper grave. But there are sayings that people have been up there and they've heard horses, um, brasses jingling and that sort of thing, and horse hooves and uh, cries of, of a man being beheaded. Oh, dear. That is that is quite terrifying. So that's always a good one. Yeah, that's a nice one. Is there anything more mundane? I like quite a mundane ghost, I'll be honest. Um, I don't think there is such a thing as a mundane hmm. ghost, really. I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but hmm. I think I think that the, the very aspect of a ghost itself is that it has quite a, a tale to tell. Hmm. Um, I mean, the other place that's well worth a visit is a place called the Creaky Cauldron in Stratford. Yes. And that is, uh, the, the building itself is part of once what was once called the, I think it was the White Lion Coach House. And it was the biggest coach house in Europe at the time. It was absolutely huge. And apparently there was a guy there called John Davis. And he was known as the Stratford Ripper. Oh, hey. And he killed quite a few young ladies um, around the town. Um, and apparently a couple of the ghosts, the, the ladies that he killed, actually haunt the Creaky Cauldron. And I'm also pretty sure that he himself has been known to manifest himself when people have been in there. They felt very oppressed. Uh, they felt somebody stood behind them. They felt very worried and things like that. My wife actually had a, an incident there a few years ago when we did an investigation. Mm. She was uh, with another lady that was there, because again we were in twos, it was Amanda Higginson, and uh, she had her hair pulled. Did she really? And there was no, all I, because I was in another part of the building and all I heard was this God almighty scream that sounded like a banshee. Sorry, Claire, if you're listening, but she did. She did sound like a banshee. And myself and Martin went running to them and she was quite shook up because she'd had her hair pulled. Wow, that's terrifying. I don't, it's all very well here. I'm being quite brave and sceptical about the whole shebang. I know in that kind of situation, I'd, I'd be off like you're saying, bolt. I would. We actually look forward to things no. like like that though that's that's i think that's why we do it mm. it is because what do you want forward. what do you want do you want conclusive proof evidence once and for all i don't think that anybody nowadays could have conclusive proof because there's that much um forgery and fakery that you can get via computers and internet tools and things like that yeah that you couldn't actually get conclusive proof i think all i'm out for is proof for myself and probably the other members of the group that there is something out there. Because I just like to think that there's more to life than we see around us. Mm. 
uh, and it's it's just knowing what that is. It's a comforting thought, isn't it? Well, we're going to go on an investigation this week, like the spooky uh, Scooby Gang, and see what we can uncover about the ghosts that you've mentioned. But thanks Excellent. so much uh, to uh, to Steve Ball for uh, popping in from Coventry Paranormal Investigations or CPI to their. Par-